Oh, is there it, you are. It is now. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. How, nice how, to see you guys. Nice to see you. you too. Thank you so much for uh, coming on. Uh, we are, we love your work so much. Uh, we were just talking. The first thing we ever saw you in was Mizapur, and we absolutely fell in love with you uh, in in Mizapur. And I apologize for. I think I'm still saying that that show incorrectly, so I. Ap- <laughs> uh, but I hope you're doing well. We know uh, uh, COVID is, is uh, going through a second wave there in India. So I hope you and everyone you love are, are well right now. Everybody so okay? Far, so far, all is well. But you never know. Things are so bad that it could change. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's very, very bad. Much more than any of us can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We pay very close attention to it. So we have... A lot of stupid babies that are constantly, and I, I don't know if you knew our <laughs> people who watch the channel and follow the channel, they, we affectionately have called them stupid babies for the past two years. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I followed your channel, I mean, before this interview, I'm sorry, but then I, then I realized that you know a lot of people I know, so I should have gotten onto it earlier, but uh, no, um, right no before. Uh, no, but stupid all. babies is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to talk to so many people, especially from Mizapur, because we we absolutely adored that series. Uh, we are very Love much looking forward to uh, season three. So, what can you tell us about season three? I have no idea. None. In fact, I'm hoping <laughs> you you would tell me something. <laughs> You've been interviewing so much. I was hoping you had some information on that one. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm very curious. I want to know myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I met my producer at a party uh, in February and I said, am I getting killed? Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and and he, was, he was very professional and had a very blank face. I couldn't tell anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard a funny story about the Game of Thrones cast. As the show kept going on, they would call each other up after they've read the script and say, I'm still alive. Are you, you're still alive. <laughs> In fact, when we were were shooting for season two, I came back home one day and I said, uh, and we had a long shift. We shot for one and a half shifts for uh, the scene in which I kill Bauji, Mm -hmm. you know, when I kill my Mm father-in-law. And I came back home and my husband said, what happened? You've been gone for so many hours. I said, you know, we had one and a half shifts and we were shooting this death scene where he died. And my husband was like, thanks. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. Thanks for thanks for ruining it. <laughs> oh man, I uh, uh, I remember I remember watching that scene, and we were rooting for you so so much to man. to for that scene to uh, to come to fruition because that the character of your father in law was just so evil, uh, and so we were we were really rooting for you to kill him. I actually wished it was even more brutal. <laughs> Do do you wish it was even more brutal, or do did you like how it how it came out? Um, I felt she got her revenge. Oh yeah, she did. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, chop off his manhood but, or something. But but when we were filming for it, I couldn't care less because mm. <laughs> because it was uh we'd been shooting for uh when we started shooting the scene, we had already been shooting for over thirteen hours, oh. and. Yes, and we, we had to finish that scene because we didn't have the location after that. Mm-hmm. So we had to stretch ourselves. And I was dying to sleep. And everybody around me was dying to sleep. <laughs> and Okay. I, I'm sorry. I just I wanted to make sure I'm hearing this right. So you had, you had already done a 13-hour day at that point. Yes. And then you begin, not like do other shots. You're beginning that scene after the 13-hour day? Yes. So was it like? Wow. A, how long it was, was the shoot day? I'm sorry. How long was the overall shoot day? Uh, that went into one and a half ships, so that was about twelve plus uh, six hours, or twelve plus four hours. Yeah, because yeah. that scene looks like you had several setups. That wasn't just a one setup shot. That was multiple setups. 
Oh my God, we were all wilting. And I remember I'm standing in front of Bauji and I'm trying my best to feel everything oh. I'm supposed to feel. And I hear these two people in the background saying, hey, what's for dinner? Is it biryani or egg fried rice? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was like, great, guys. <laughs> well, wow. aside, that's a great segue into a question I'd like. You, how are you managing your schedule? Because you've got like multiple TV shows that are doing very well at the same time, plus film projects, among other things we probably don't know about. How, how, are everything managing okay? Or you, you feel overworked? Or does everything manage well right now? Uh, I actually have had a lot of breaks because of the COVID, COVID situation. Yeah. And uh, I mean, for, for seven months last year, none of us could shoot. Uh, right. uh, so when finally we could, I shot for Out of Love season two, which is releasing day after actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was in the hills. So I was absolutely, I was relieved to be out, uh, relieved to be shooting again and relieved to be shooting in the hills. But had that not happened, then I would have had a very, very packed schedule and then I might have been um, uh, overworked. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wasn't because we weren't uh, shooting most of last year. Uh, but before that, yes, I had I shot Mirzapur season two and Out of Love season one simultaneously, which was a very, very tough schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and I shot Suitable Boy uh, mm -hmm. right after I started filming for it six days after I finished shooting for Out of Love season one. And I started Delhi Crime about two weeks after uh, I finished uh, filming for Suitable Boy. And out of that one week, I was scuba diving in the Maldives. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was pretty bad, but that was fairly, that was still new in my life at that time. So I was willing to take that on and I was actually very excited and feeling sort of important about juggling dates and taking night flights and landing yeah. somewhere saying, oh, you know, I was shooting all day. So I was kind of enjoying the the <laughs> importance of Yeah. Uh, had it gone on longer, yes, I would have been exhausted. But then I was sort of enjoying this newness, this new busyness in my life. <laughs> yeah, dang, that's... Yeah, working is working is extremely fun, and you do it so so well. You so the fact that you were Donna already on a thirteen hour day by the start of that scene, you hit it very very well. It was absolutely perfect. Um, what can you tell me a little I think bit? I have to give it, Go ahead. Sorry, I think I have to. I think I have to give it to Kulbushan Kharbanda, who is my co actor in the scene, because he's been he's been uh, acting for mm -hmm. longer than I remember, and. Um, and he was just so on the ball and so, so committed to every moment in that scene that, you know, whenever I was slacking, I would look at him and say, I was like, I would be like, I have no excuse to slack. This guy is on top of his game, you know, yeah. <laughs> after all these years. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah. Everybody in that series is so good. Uh, the, the writing and the acting in that is, is absolutely phenomenal. One of the best series we've ever seen. Can you tell us a little bit about how you created that character? Like, uh, what were the, some of the inspirations for her? Um, uh, so, Bina was exciting to me because she's everything that I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, she's, uh, I, I often say that I live vicariously through her because uh, she's uh, all those things that I have... Uh, sort of uh, admired in women I have seen uh, in my life, but not been that ever, you know. Mm. So, for example, when I first read her on paper, I felt that she's the kind of person who, uh, when she walks into a room, people would turn and look at her for some reason. Mm. There's something magnetic about her. It's not like she's doing something which is outlandish or wearing something which is outlandish. There's just a magnetic quality. And... Uh, and she, she's kind of uh, has a body language which is very, very sensual, you know. Mm -hmm. There's something very sensual about it. Um, I'm not like that in life at all. I'm quite a Mr. Cellophane. I'm happy to blend into a background. I have shy body language and all of those things. Um, so I was excited to take her on uh, for, for that reason. And the first image that came to my mind was of this girl I had met many years ago who's a singer and she's from a very small town in the north of India 
and uh, she had come to bombay for a performance and i had met her at a dinner party and when i looked at her she just seemed like somebody who was um uh, like like a fairly uh, regular uh, uh, person who i might not have looked at a second time uh, but the moment she she began singing her her body transformed you know mm. there was a sensual quality to the way she sang uh, there was something that happened in her body you know and i was so stunned i remember i was eating something i just stopped and stared at her because i had just seen this person transform in front of me you know yeah. so she was sort of my um, uh, the, her image was a, was one that i would sort of keep at the back of my mind uh well while i was uh, being beena you know mm-hmm. so um uh so that was that that was one physical sort of image that uh, that came to mind otherwise mm-hmm. i generally so i think watched women who are who carry their sexuality or who wear their sexuality on their sleeve very carefully in almost an envious way because i've never been that you know mm-hmm. uh and it's often something that is not very um uh, applauded in indian society especially for women and uh, whenever i've seen that in women and their comfort around it i've always had huge admiration for that uh, so i think those are subconscious images that have always remained and uh, uh, those you know on days where you feel they they sort of just when you're being the part they sort of just uh, Uh, come to mind and you're 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 amazed by how many things you're carrying within yourself anyway yeah so i was wondering the the sensuality that you've denoted that came from her character is that something that was given to you on the scripted page was it something you came up with was it collaborative with the writer and director how did that come about mm, uh it was there in the script uh yeah. and and it was something that uh mm, it was very there in the script and in okay. fact to the point that when i was cast for the part i was almost amazed that they had cast me for this because i thought they would have chosen somebody maybe who is uh, uh uh done parts like this before or has a body language similar to uh, what this part did demands so i was quite uh, uh, quite impressed that they decided to cast somebody who is not like that in fact when i first went uh, when i first went for initial meetings and rehearsals um uh it, there was a part of me which was almost thinking are they sure are they going to change their mind <laughs> you know <laughs> what's happening because it was very out of the box casting yeah. um so so yes it was written and then i because i was so conscious that i might not be able to pull it off because it's so not me i worked on it uh, with the director mm. um, i mean we we sort of talked about it a lot but we both uh, soon both of us found that we knew that we were on the same page so we didn't need to um, uh, uh, over articulate it or or as i say talk it away you know yeah yeah, yeah. overthink it yeah, yeah. absolutely so, yeah. And we got to talk to Pankaj Tripathi uh uh just before the, I think season I think it was just before season 2 came out. Um and yeah. he actually said that you were the best part of the entire season 2. Uh and y'all's chemistry was just so wonderful. I'm sure acting alongside of Pankaj was made your jobs extremely easy. Can you t- talk about working with him? Of course, he's a wonderful co-actor. He's just um such an interesting human being that that just shines through in everything that he does you know the it's all it's like he can't uh, keep the niceness away so he's he's wonderful and i keep telling him that you know i i feel like you come with your own lights because you're always glowing yeah <laughs> and, and so he's wonderful and he's also got uh, besides being a very very gifted actor I think he's also um uh very uh, uh uh he has a very strong uh, uh, command over language which is I think one of his biggest strengths as an actor. So he articulates things very beautifully. He's able to change lines around in a very effective way to sort of uh, meet the requirements of a scene in case they're not written like that. he also has an amazing sense of humor mm-hmm. uh which is 
uh, he's so funny. He just has that natural uh, comic timing, which just, I mean, Pankaj just has to stand in front of me for two minutes and I'll probably laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So there's there's yeah. that. I, I totally enjoy working with him. And he's also very receptive to um, uh, uh, newness from a co-actor. Mm. Like I'm, I'm very, I'm, I don't enjoy working with actors who's, who, you know, if you throw something new at them, they'll say, hey, but this is not what we rehearsed. And I'm like, oh my God, we just lost an opportunity for something new, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm just so game for that always, you know, yeah. that if I throw something new at him, he'll receive it and throw something new back at me, you know, mm-hmm. or or just, just respond to it. And I think we're on the same page uh, with that. In fact, all the actors in Mirzapur, even Divyendu, Divyendu and I went to um, uh, Divyendu who plays Munna I'm mm-hmm. sure, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Divyendu and I went to the same film school. We were batchmates in, in, in acting school. So it was just so nice to have him around as well because, you know, just these basic things where, you know, if your co-actor does something which is uh, not rehearsed, not scripted, you receive it and you respond to it. You yes Absolutely. and rather than yeah. say... This is not what we we had uh, uh, we had first. Uh, so it's great yes. fun to work with actors like that. Pankaj is like that. Vivian is like that. Yeah. Yes, and to you, to you stupid babies who just heard her say yes and that is <laughs> from her training, which is a great transition question because um, I have found that what you get experientially from actors that aren't wanting improv, which is where all of the life is in those moments, just in the moment. Uh, I have found that that typically comes from not having any background in training pretty much and the fear of the unknown, which training gets rid of and wants you to be in the unknown. What what got you started? What made you want to be an actress? And then what was the path in, in your training process, if you could share a little bit about that? Actually, funnily enough, what got me to be an actress was that I was yes ending to life at that time. <laughs> 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 I had no strategy. Um, I had done a little bit of theatre while I was a a, a college student uh, in uh, in Delhi. Um, I studied at this lovely, uh, liberal, culturally informed feminist college, which uh, um, sort of was an eye-opener for me after I finished school uh, in a small town in Jharkhand. Uh, And uh, uh, then I went to study at Lady Sri Ram College, LSR in in Delhi. Uh, And suddenly there was this world of uh, um, uh, theatre and and, uh, music and uh, films which I was introduced to. And I uh, spent every single moment, and literature, and I spent every single moment that I had in that college lapping up whatever I could because I had I felt like I had been starved up until then, you know. So that was really like my uh, uh, cultural awakening, so to say. Uh, and theatre was a very uh, strong part of that. But uh, so I, I did a lot of theatre while I was in college and I watched a lot of theatre while I was in college. Uh, but I never, ever had imagined that this would be a career for me because I had no precedence of that uh, in my family. I had nobody around me who was doing that. So I just went on to then Yes and Life. And uh, as luck would have it, I found myself in a, uh, in a uh, postgraduate course, which... Uh, which taught film as a paper, you know. So they had a combination of things. It was like a mass communication course, which had papers in journalism, papers in um, uh, uh, in film, paper uh, papers in uh, radio and television. And it was run by this uh, lady called Jeru Mullah, who was very, very passionate about film. So of all the papers that, was, that were there, film sort of automatically became one of the most important things because it was taught with so much passion. Um, so I'd heard about the film school uh, in Pune at that time because, uh, you know, most of the prints that we would get of really old films to watch would come from the film archives, which was associated with the film school at that time. And it's, uh, the film school in Pune is a very... Uh, uh, integral part of the history of Indian cinema. It's also located physically in a space which used to be one of the first studios uh, of Indian cinema called Prabhat Studios. Um, so I, th- I had been introduced to all of this, but 
like I said, I didn't have a plan. I finished the course and I went on to be, become a research, an academic research assistant on uh, several academic projects. I worked with Abhijit Banerjee, who got the Nobel Prize last year as a research mm -hmm. assistant. I then worked with on a project uh, uh, on gender and public space. And I was just doing whatever I thought was fun. Somebody wrote me an email and said, hey, here's a project on gender and public space. Come to Bombay. So I would come to Bombay. Somebody would write me an email and say, here's an interesting project in UP on uh, developmental economics. And I would be like, hey, I, I, I'll come. You know, it was like that. <laughs> so, so I was like I said, yes, and me. And similarly, I, I realized that, you know, while being in, in academic circles was very interesting, it was not something which I was very qualified for at that stage. I had no background in social sciences. Um, so uh, I was wondering what I should be doing with my life. When I opened the newspaper and I uh, read an article which said that the film school in Pune is restarting their acting course after 26 years. So I said, wow, that sounds like fun. Let me let me apply for this. So I applied to the film school. And uh, it's a pretty rigorous entrance process. And uh, I got through uh, the entrance exam. Uh, and I only joined because the entrance exam was so difficult that I said, now that I've got through, let me just go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I went to FTI. Little, little did I know that everybody around me who had come uh, to be part of the acting course was very committed to being a star and had lots of acting experience. I had just dabbled in a little bit of theater in Bombay, uh, in uh, in Delhi. I had some film studies sort of experience and that's about it. Uh, everybody there had been wanting to be an actor since they were children, you know. <laughs> So I was a, li a little bit uh, stumped by that. I was like, hey, really? You've been working towards this all your life? And I just sort of saw this in the newspaper two months <laughs> back and said, Here I am. Let's, let's try this course. This is great fun. Um, and uh, But six months into the course, I think, I, I don't know what, what it was, but either it was... Uh, um, uh, the enthusiasm of people around me, which was infectious, which I, um, uh, which I got onto, or it was just, I think I just realized that this is something that I can never, never say I know how to do, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so that just kept me very interested. And I don't think I'd ever felt uh, as connected to anything that I had done in my life as I had to what was asked of me in those say, in the first six, seven months of the course. And then I knew that this is what I'm going to be doing for a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've it's been such a single-minded, I've looked at this career with so much focus and almost an obsession, you know, mm -hmm. uh, almost a very beautiful obsession. Yeah. It's like it's like finding, finding a soulmate. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. So you have been part of obviously a ton of films and now a bunch of obviously OTT platform uh, TV shows, uh, Mizapur, Delhi Crime, Suitable Boy, OK Computer, uh, all that kind of stuff. But you also do a lot of short films. Uh, so is, is that something that's really important to you just to diversify or is it just you find these wonderful roles in these short films that you just you have to be a part of? Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, I enjoy the short film format a lot. I think it's um, harder to it's harder and harder to tell a story um, uh, uh, when you have lesser time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think the luxury of time allows you a lot, but you can also misuse it, mm -hmm. and you can also. Uh, I I th I, th I believe that the best training for filmmakers, in fact, in India is maybe ad filmmaking mm -hmm. because the kind of uh, advertising that happens in our country is very uh, uh, is very emotionally motivated mm -hmm. you know it, they, they're, mm -hmm. they're actually 30 second emotional dramas the, the way yes advertising have it's not informational at all it's like really tugging at all the cords to sell you something you know yeah. yes. tugging yes. all those emotional cords to sell you something and i keep i feel like that's it's harder and harder to tell a story well 
when you have lesser time and you learn so much about how to utilize that time and you learn so much about how to enrich every moment and everything that's present in your frame so i think it's a very difficult uh, uh, form of filmmaking um uh, i think that you have to be very precise and you have to be very uh, 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 particular about every single detail and i enjoy that way of working a lot i anyway enjoy the directors who are obsessed about details you know i love working with them and i love obsessing with them about details <laughs> so so i enjoy that format um i but you know short films are also sort of looked at as stepping stones for newcomers because uh, typically they have uh, uh, smaller budgets and people might not be willing to put uh, big monies on you but they're willing to sort of uh, experiment with a new director uh, 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 on a short film so i think it's also a good space to sort of uh, get to know uh, newer talent mm -hmm. uh, and i'm i'm always excited about filmmakers who come with a fresh uh, filming language and that's always a thrill for me so i think that's also a good space to sort of be around in to uh, to know what's happening with with new storytellers you know yeah um, yeah yeah we've seen obviously we've been really impressed with everything we've seen from india but especially uh, the short films that we've seen and we've seen many have all been uniformly extremely good like we saw chutney we saw the school bag we loved both of them yeah. and it does seem that the short film genre is something that is like you said considered a stepping stone which it very much is here in fact i think in america actors consider the short film across the board to be a stepping stone but many of them don't come back whereas in india we see people like yourself nasaruddin shah manoj uh, the list names goes down uh, uh um uh, Kal kalki kaklan has done it it's just this consistency with which established actors we don't need the stepping stone still want to come back to the medium because it's that challenge you spoke of and it's turning out great quality work so is that what you see as well there's just this consistency that short films are considered something yeah i i do tv series i do film i do short films and that stays as part of your repertoire um i you know i'm not so conscious of what my repertoire has mm -hmm. that's not the way i look at uh, my career i'm Uh, honestly just responding to things when they come to me and if mm. they feel exciting i'll find time for them you yeah. know yes uh, and uh, <laughs> yes and <laughs> so, yeah. so that that's how i i think about it and uh, and like i said you know just i i'm excited about it because uh, if it's introducing me to a a, a new um, uh, a storyteller a new director who sort of has his own language then i'm excited about that yes it's taking a risk and in fact i just shot a short film with nasiruddin shah and uh, uh, it's, it's it's taking a risk with the director right uh, it might turn out to be an experience which you might feel is sort of wasteful but i think it's a risk worth taking time wise it's not so much there's not so much to lose you know and mm -hmm. if you do yeah. discover somebody you want to collaborate with in the future it's a great find yeah absolutely um the you have worked with a ton of our favorite people um and it like we just watched kisa and we'll, we'll get into that because uh we we adored mm -hmm. that you've obviously worked with uh nawazuddin sadiqi you've worked with uh radika you've worked with vijay varma you've worked with panka you've worked with so many people is that an important part when you're choosing something to um get on to is they other performers that you could work with increasingly it's become one of the most important things for me actually mm -hmm. uh, my director and my co-actors uh, i would uh, not do a project if i don't get a good sense of that mm. uh, if i don't get a good feeling about that even if i have the best role and it's the best story if i don't uh, if that's not feeling right i might not do it you mm. know that's how important. and i i think as the years go by that has become more and more important to me because more and more i've realized that filmmaking is 
is such a collaborative exercise but such a personal exercise as well and therefore the people you work with have to uh, have respect for your vulnerabilities and have to nurture that you know um and if they don't have that then it's it can be a destroying exercise it can be heartbreaking so uh, i don't want to put myself through that at all uh, and uh, it's hard to tell sometimes because it's not to say that i only want to work with people who are, whose work i have seen not at all it's just about the kind of uh, uh for want of a better word vibe you get from people sure. when you uh when you meet them because i'm always excited to work with uh, uh with people who haven't done so much work before as well because that's how all of us got a chance right yeah. everybody took a chance mm-hmm. on us so we should take a chance on people who are new yeah 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 um we as corbin just said we saw um kisa and we uh, also saw um manto um which of those two had you done first i'm forgetting the sequence of them i think kisa was first and then manto yes that's right yes 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 and we didn't get the honor of being able to speak with irfan before he left but obviously we would love to know we want to talk a little bit about kisa specifically your role and what you and tilotama were able to do together but what was it like to work with and had you worked with irfan prior to that film mm-hmm. no i hadn't mm-hmm. uh yeah. it was and it was pretty early on uh in my career in the sense it was one of the first big projects i had i had been around for a while but i'd had i'd done a lot of small parts and i had almost no work for a very long time before i got kissa so it was a very very important film for me and at that time irfan was already a very established and celebrated actor and i had absolutely no work to speak of but um uh but the kind of attention and respect that i got from him and from uh, tiska and tilotma and from anup singh the director of kissa is something which uh, i will always be very very grateful for you know mm-hmm. uh, uh, also i think till date kissa has been one of my best experiences as a performer because it it was the first film that opened me up to the possibilities of performance and mm-hmm. showed me for the first time that there can be magic mm-hmm. you know in the time we action and cut uh and i was so mesmerized by that you know uh so uh, just to give you an example there was the scene that um, uh, irfan and i were shooting uh, right at the end of the film it's actually i think the second last scene of the film uh, it's right before neeli right before neeli i i don't mm-hmm. even know <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't jump it's like she doesn't no, pause she just... it's yeah. just one of those things <laughs> uh we were shooting that scene um on the terrace of that house and uh, uh kissa was a, 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 a small budget film we didn't have the luxury of reshoots and we had very little time to shoot scenes and we were everybody had to always be on the ball there were there were no there was no room for mistakes we were shooting in winters in punjab we had very little daylight time so all of those things um and we're shooting the scene uh, this is roughly uh, close to the end of the schedule of, of shooting the film and um, uh, so far the rest of the film is in my opinion been shot beautifully and here we are shooting this one scene which is so important but there was just on the day that we shot it i just didn't feel anything like i just felt like i didn't know what this scene was about and there was nothing in the scene mm-hmm. and also it's a difficult space because the entire film is in the magic realism space so there there are no gimmicks to make it work you know right it's to uh, so and i because i this was such an important film for me in almost in utter desperation i just looked at irfan and i said i didn't say anything but i just looked so desperate and he looked back at me and he said hmm <laughs> <laughs> like, like as if to say i know it's not working i know you wanted mm-hmm. to work but hey there are some days when it doesn't you mm-hmm. know so mm-hmm. because of his experience he sort of he knew that but i was just like somebody please find some magic for this to work <laughs> you know yeah. i was like 
um anyway a few days later uh, the director called me and he said that uh, can we reshoot the scene and i said of course we can reshoot the scene it it was Please. <laughs> uh, I, yeah it was one of my days off and he said would you be okay to come in tomorrow to reshoot the scene i said of course and i went to the scene with so much anxiety because i felt i had to bring something great to this now because we are taking out time to reshoot it and anoop as anoop is is a very beautiful lyrical and calm person and he was like no no just turn up it's fine so i turned up with extreme anxiety irfan was there and i'm again looking at irfan saying what do i do <laughs> to make this work <laughs> and <laughs> there was just this moment before we start the scene where it wasn't scripted it wasn't choreographed where irfan just holds my hand and in fact anoop took a shot of that later it wasn't planned it was not a direction written into the screenplay and that for me transformed the entire scene mm. now how irfan knew that whether he did or did not or it was just something that he instinctively felt like doing i don't know but we did eight takes of that shot i remember because it was you know i get up and i look at him and i turn and i walk so there was track there was a track and all of that so we we had to do eight takes because of technical issues but each one of those takes was magical and so beautiful that the th- the things that i experienced in those takes is something so bizarre that i can't even articulate it it's the 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 bizarreness and the magic of the experience of those eight takes and all of them different from each other was like a master class in acting for me right there you know mm-hmm. um and years later because irfan had so much work than i did even after kissa years later when kissa released this was we filmed in 2012 when 2015 uh was uh, one of the first screenings before the release of the film and i met irfan outside the screening after we'd watched the film and he said um you know you've done a great job i said thank you huh? and he said you know you remember that scene um something had happened between us that day <laughs> and i said yeah you remember too so it was not just uh. me you know <laughs> and that yeah. you also remembered after all those years so yeah that's a spe- very special special memory wow yeah. oh it's a beautiful story a beautiful story magical. i i can't uh, I can't imagine how difficult it must be for an editor and a director to take the work that Irfan did and how much of his work ended up on the cutting room floor that you just looked at and went, "No, bring that back." You you said the eight takes that you did. Now, on on the other side of things, since it was a smaller budget and you didn't have a lot of time, I'm really interested. The chemistry between you and Tilotama mm-hmm. was absolutely gorgeous, and I I I got to ask Did you have rehearsal time because considering a low budget I'm imagining you didn't have a lot of rehearsal time? Um actually we ended up having a lot of rehearsal time but uh the rehearsal time was not um there uh, was less not because of an independent film but because I was cast very last minute onto the mm. film. Somebody else ah. was cast instead of me and they act- they had a little bit of a fallout with the producers and so I was cast about Ten days before we started filming, mm. uh, but once we got uh, to the location, um, there were about eight days where, because of some location issue, we hadn't started filming. So Tilotma and I had eight days where we only spent time with each other, going over the lines of the film endlessly. And also those ten days that we were in Bombay, we met very often. We did um, uh, small workshops and. Uh, with her it was i think from the i remember we started with one very simple exercise which is pretty common in um, in a lot of theater rehearsals where one person hides a pin on their body mm-hmm. and the other mm-hmm. person has to try and find it find you know it. it's the, yeah. it's one of those basic starting out exercises and that was the first exercise that i did with tilotma and i knew then that this was going to be a great marriage <laughs> <laughs> because it was on that day that we found the playfulness with those two characters yeah and both of us understood that that was important yeah uh, 
and uh, uh, and of course anoop uh, reiterated that in several ways though he would never say it directly we all of us have a joke about anoop you ask him um, what do i have to do and he says let me tell let me recite this poem <laughs> he'll, he'll never answer your question directly he'll always be about a poem about a film and you know sometimes when you're shooting you're like no i just want to know what to do <laughs> right <laughs> that's so, yeah. awesome yeah you the, the the chemistry with everybody in that entire film was so wonderful uh we we really really are glad that we were able to one find it and and watch it because uh yes. we know a lot of people weren't able to watch it and after we posted our review we saw a bunch of people that actually went and got to go see this masterpiece so we're very very happy about that i want to talk about Ma monto a little bit uh you you've played a real person i believe a few times uh, and i believe this was this was one of them uh was is that how different is that for you to play somebody real as opposed to a, a fictional character um so i think the advantage that i had was uh there was not much known about safia manto mm -hmm. a lot was known about manto but uh, uh not many people even knew about safia um in fact in fact i had read a lot of manto stories in college but i had never really heard of safia manto you mm -hmm. know uh, so i think it becomes easier to play a part where, uh, where where people don't have a preconceived idea of the person i think the tougher job was for nawaz because mm -hmm. people had already an image of manto and uh, they were bound to some were bound to be excited about what nawaz brought and some were bound to be disappointed with what he brought because there's such a strong notion of what that person is in your mind already so with safia that didn't exist in fact even the part that safia has in the film was thanks to nandita where she spent so much time with the family and all of it is from anecdotal information from them uh, manto has written almost nothing about his wife mm. in fact uh, uh, there are only two or three places where there is a mention of her mm. and when i was preparing for the part and i was fairly sort of involved in it i remember one day i got really pissed off i was like why did he not write anything about me <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah Indeed. absolutely <laughs> so mean. <laughs> Did I not mean enough? <laughs> Now Rude. that also makes me think of another question regarding the roles that you've played because obviously we haven't seen all of your work but of the work that we've seen you have a uncanny capacity to play pretty much any age range. At the same time you also play characters that carry with them this maternal strength and i'm wondering aside from the people you are attracted to working with directors and actors that you can trust are there roles that attract you a particular kind of role that you find challenging or is everything for you yes and um i don't know i think subconsciously there are roles that you are more attracted to uh which you might which i might not be aware of and while you were asking this question and thank you for articulating it so beautifully where you said maternal strength i was like oh my god yes he has a point so <laughs> i hadn't noticed that about wow. my own work like this till you uh, mentioned it um but yes i think that uh, uh that uh, that a lot of uh, uh, uh I think I'm influenced a lot by the women I grew up with mm -hmm. and there was a quiet strength about them which was so uh they lived their lives with so much grace and dignity but at the same time with such uh, uh thanklessness I mean people were so thankless to them for what they brought uh uh to uh, their lives that it's almost like I feel guilty about that and uh, Safia Manto clearly for me uh not at the time that i was being her but later when i looked at the film was my silent tribute to my grandmother mm -hmm. because uh, um you know she she was this person who was always there for everybody and everybody uh, uh, took her for granted all the time <laughs> and never really uh, uh made her feel special for the many many special things that she constantly did for everybody around her mm -hmm. you know 
So, um, so I think, yeah. So I think that uh, the guilt of not having respected that for the women, and you know, as a child, I would probably sort of mimic what I saw around me as well. So maybe I didn't um, also uh, respect it enough. So I think that, and, and uh, that that one now that I'm I'm a woman, I sort of admire all of that so much. Uh, more and I really feel guilty for not respecting it enough. Mm-hmm. So I think that is uh, always present. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first place we saw that that insane age range, we saw. I think the first thing we saw was Mizapur for you, and then we went into Delhi crimes. And so you f- went from like this it's insanely powerful mother to this almost teenager. It felt like, and so it was. It almost blew our mind. We didn't recognize you for a little bit in Delhi crimes. So it was extremely, extremely impressive. Um, you you're you're part of a lot of OTT platforms now. Is that some a uh, a uh, uh, a platform that you're very excited about? That they're, they're just telling really good stories. Uh, is that why you're involved? Because you're involved in a suitable boy, uh, OK Computer. Uh, I think there's another one, Mizapur, Delhi Crimes, all this kind of stuff. You talk about working in OTT platforms. Mm, well, it's been a, a boon for actors in the last uh, few years. Um, but uh, I mean, you know, as with every space, there it does get cluttered. There is the good and bad there as well. There's there have been so many positive changes, especially in my life because of the streaming services mm-hmm. uh, becoming popular. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and like like you said, you know, this kind of variety is something that uh, uh, wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for streaming services. Because there really seems to be room for all sorts of genres here. You know, there is no one genre which is successful and everybody is just sort of, uh, 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 everybody is just sort of aping that formula. That hasn't happened. And I don't think that the way the, the way streaming services are designed, I don't think that that'll happen there'll always be room for everyone yeah uh, but uh, uh, but yes i mean there has been a lot of clutter in the last few years there's some incredibly bad writing also happening uh, <laughs> there is uh, also the pressure to and sa- most of the shows that i've worked on haven't given into that pressure but uh, but there are other shows which have uh, there's a pressure to give into churning out a subsequent season quickly if the season has done well and yeah. therefore the writing and the quality of the show suffers. So yes. there's a lot of that there. Also, I mean, now, now even though they don't release numbers officially, there's also a sense now of what is making more numbers. The number game has always not been exciting to me yeah. because then it pushes... That it sort of really pushes you in the direction of a formula, you know. Yeah. So all that is, I think, happening here as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know how interesting a space it will remain and for how long. Yeah. But for now, it still is. Yeah. So I'm willing to sort of bask in the glory of it for as long as I feel creatively satisfied. And if I don't, then I will not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have... Um any hopes and dreams for doing things with your career that i mean obviously you've built it thus far with the yes and philosophy that you took from your acting understanding but are there things now that you look at and you think oh i would love to do that whether it was someone you'd love to work with and haven't yet or do you have any aspirations to be in a film that's outside of india like particularly a hollywood film or creators here that you'd love to work with I would love to be in a biopic. I think that's mm. one of those things which is really something I would like to uh, sink my teeth into. Because like I said, it's such a tough one. People already have a preconceived idea of this person. And you really right. have to try and match that, you know. And um, also, um, it it requires you essentially to uh, have a very physical process as well because you have to sort of have mannerisms which are uh, similar to this person. So I'm very excited to sort of, uh, um, uh, if I get an opportunity to do that. And of course, for uh, for working in Hollywood projects, I mean, I'm very excited to work in uh, uh, something which is outside of my culture. Mm. I think that that 
that kind of vulnerability um, uh, it would be interesting to see what that does to me as an actor you know yeah. uh, when you're working in a yeah. culture which you don't totally understand uh and uh, the nuances of which you have to sort of struggle to make your way through you know uh so yeah i'm excited about that yeah well we would be as well uh for you to see you in anything uh, in the future but especially uh if you ever come to hollywood that would be wonderful we would love for there's so many artists from india that we would love that just americans to know about uh and to see their work uh yours yours included uh it's just a a dream of ours not to just make it here for americans to see indian films that you guys have already made um is is one of our our big aspirations um but i do want to finish this off i want to thank you so much for talking to us with a little bit of rapid fire just a uh Silly questions. Um, coffee or chai? Coffee. Mm. Uh, favorite alcoholic beverage if you drink alcohol? Uh, whiskey. Hell yeah. Uh, nice. <laughs> favorite Hollywood film? Favorite ho- uh, Prestige. Oh, interesting. Or, or Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. There's a tie. Mm. <laughs> Favorite Indian film, any region? Favorite Indian film, uh, Mr. India. Oh, it's Sri Devi, right? I love that film. Yes. Yeah, we have. <laughs> it's like I can, I can watch it over and over again for the rest of my life. <laughs> we, we haven't seen that one yet, but I hear a lot about it, so we were looking forward to getting to that one. It's great. Uh, it's uh, great. I I wonder what you would, uh, how you would respond to it when you watch, if you watch it for the first time now. You know, I wonder. You might think it's tacky now, <laughs> but because I watched it earlier and continue to watch it many times, I love that film. Well, we've we've loved every classic we've seen from Cholet to Padosen to uh, a, a bunch of others. So uh, they, the classics currently are, are ten for ten. Uh, favorite uh, Hollywood director. Christopher Nolan. Favorite Indian director. Favorite Indian director, tough one. Uh, Vishal Bhardwaj. Mm. Mm. And uh, favorite Hollywood actor. Favorite Hollywood actor. Or actress, uh, or both. Uh, Kate Blanchett, Olivia Colman, uh, right now. Mm-hmm. Um, actor, I'm trying to think. Sorry, no I'm worries. just I'm, I'm obsessed with the women performances. <laughs> Kate, yeah, Blanch- Kate Blanchett and Olivia Colman are fantastic. Uh, and your yep. favorite book. My favorite book is uh, Pride and Prejudice. Mm, very mm-hmm. nice. Well, thank you so much for, for chatting with us. It was an absolute pleasure. Yes. Uh, you're, you're extremely fun to talk to, just as much fun as you are to watch uh, on screen. We are so much looking forward to everything uh, you have in the future and seeing the stuff that you've already done that we haven't gotten to yet. Um, and so yes. uh, good luck to you and hope you stay safe, Rick. Thank you so yeah, much. I- Thank you. This is great fun. Yeah, thank you for your time. We really do. We've been so blessed for the past two years to have interviews with people who, and this is really a criteria for us, that we, the people we want to talk to are the artists that we have such deep respect and admiration for, and we want to hear about their process. We want to understand what makes them tick as artists. And that's why we wanted to talk to you. Your work that you've done has been consistently beautiful. And we are some of your biggest fans cheering for you and looking forward to the work that you have ahead as you continue to say, yes, and when we see your name on it, we'll be saying yes, and and watching it and sharing it with the stupid family. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank (laughs) Thank you. You You have a great night. Okay. Bye bye. Have a good night.